Hello everybody and welcome to the channel, it's Paul Yester here, and today I have some statistics for you. And coincidentally, just a couple of days ago, Otz had put up this tweet saying, It's honestly wild that we keep having heated conversations about Dead by Daylight's balance, while the devs haven't published any data about kill rates since September 2022, about a year and a half ago. And so Eric Pope, who is the community director for Dead by Daylight, had replied, We've got some data coming soon. This post is just being finalized and locked. And Otz replied, bless, that's great news. Looking forward to seeing it. And so then we had three, here we are three days later, and that data is now available. Nothing like some data to start your day. Special edition developer update. So let's go and check it out. So here we are, developer update stats. Since we've started regularly sharing stats last, last year, we've received various requests for different kinds of data you would like to see. On top of the usual statistics we have, we've selected a few of the most requested topics to share with you today. But before we dive in, we'd like to remind everyone that while data may be fun to talk about, it does not paint a full picture. The numbers we'll be sharing are very broad, covering millions of matches played all around the world, so the numbers may not reflect your personal experiences. We encourage you to have fun discussing this info, but please try not to draw any conclusions from data alone. It's important to dig deeper to understand the context behind the numbers you see. Even, even we don't make decisions based on data on its own. All right, so we're going to start out with popular perks. Starting things off, here's an update to the 10 most popular perks for each role. The percentage listed next to each perk indicates their usage rate. In other words, in other words the likelihood that someone will have it in their loadout. Arrows indicate if the perk has moved up or down in this list since we last shared stats, while a white line shows that they remained in the same spot. So this data is taken from December 30th to January 29th, so just about one month of data here. And you can see that your top 10 favorite perks for Survivor are, no surprise here, Windows of Opportunity at 32%, Adrenaline at 23%, Live at 21%, Resilience at 17%, Deja Vu at 15%, Self Care at 15%, Sprint Burst at 13%, Dead Heart at 12%, Bond at 12%, and Kindred at 10%. So I personally use two of these in my loadout, um, Windows of Opportunity being the one, and Sprint Burst is the other. So going down the list here, Adrenaline, we did see that Dork had said on the last live stream that they were looking at Adrenaline and considering making a change to that, which surprised a lot of people because they feel like that's a pretty balanced perk. I don't really know what they would do to this, except for possibly making it so that Adrenaline doesn't kick in when you were coming off the hook, or I don't know, maybe it would have a short healing a short healing time and then it would wear off i don't know what they would do with that resilience going to make you do gens faster everything faster when you're injured really deja vu is going to show you where the three gen is at and help you do gens faster a lot of people were surprised that self-care is on here but you remember there are a lot of people who play this game solo and they can't always count on their own teammates so they want to be able to heal themselves i personally bring a med kit because i think it's more efficient and faster so I can generally get through a match with a med kit. So uh, yeah, I don't know. To each their own on that. And Kindred is pretty good, it, both in team and on solo, because you can see what everybody is doing when someone's on the hook, and you can just judge whether you need to be the one to go for the save or stay where you are, finish your den, all of that stuff. It's very helpful in providing spacing information on who is where when someone's on the hook. So there's your top 10. I see a lot of people trying for a nerf to Windows of Opportunity because of this. And some killers are like, are you kidding? That's like a, a slot that's keeping those survivors away from adrenaline or anything else that's on this list. Um, I think that it would be a mistake to nerf Windows. Uh, in, in today's modern game where killers are stunned for less time, they recover from their successful hits with the blade wipe being shorter. Survivors get less distance once they are injured uh, on a speed boost. 
and because that's been shortened all those factors that are coming into play it's more imperative than ever to have correct pathing and not be guessing and being able to plan out where you're going to go when stuff hits the fan is very important and i think if you were to get rid of this perk or nerf it into the ground that you would see kill rate skyrocket that's my personal opinion i don't know i mean you know <laughs> this game requires you don't have the time to make adjustments that you had before to look for stuff i i slept on windows of opportunity for the longest time i felt like it was a noob perk and i didn't want it need it use it and i have come to think of this perk very fondly it helps me decide where i'm going to go after i make my next move next this tile to that tile chain tiles together there's nothing like not having this information and going into a tile and not realizing oh this pallet's been used already and then you are dead like uh, this is a very valuable perk is it too valuable that it needs to be nerfed i guess that's for the devs to decide but uh i sure hope not moving on we have the top 10 killer perks that are used in that same time frame window from december 30th to january 29th topping the list in first place we have pop goes the weasel at 22 percent scourge hook pain resonance at 21 percent sloppy butcher at 17 percent sloppy is on the list for the developer roadmap of perks that are going to be tweaked in the future um or is it just the mangled effect i forget i'll put the i'll put the screenshot up here and you can see uh then we have surge you may also know it as jolt at 12 percent. that one's fallen down a bit then we have corrupt intervention in fifth at 12 percent. save the best for last at 12 percent and sixth barbecue and chili down a bit for 11 percent seventh place no ed in eighth place 11 percent lethal pursuer down a bit at um, ninth place notice distortion was not in the top 10 survivor perks and then we have bamboozle coming in at 10th place with eight percent there for the next section we have here popular killers like perks we've also tallied up the 10 most popular killers over the past month the number below represents the percentage of all matches where that given killer was played with the arrows and lines again indicating how they have changed in popularity since we last shared this data. Well, obviously Chucky is up because he was never available before, and it's no surprise being the newest killer. A lot of people were trying him, and he comes in at number one. 7% of the killers picked were Chucky. Number two is 6% Huntress. 6% Wraith for third place. Legion at 5% in fourth. Wesker the Mastermind at 5% in 5th. He's gone down a bit. Trapper at 5% there. In 6th place, Michael Myers in 7th um, place at 4%. The Nurse in 8th place at 4%. The Blight in 4% in ninth place. And Ghostface in 4% in 10th place there. Of this top 10, the only free killer that everyone gets for free. Remember that PC doesn't get and doctor for free uh the hillbilly is noticeably absent will we see the hillbilly crack the top 10 now that he has these buffs as uh one of the joining his free killer brethren amongst the group will we shall see all right beyond the top 10 the pick rates are as follows in descending popularity for the sake of simplicity we have rounded these numbers to the nearest whole percentage Doctor's pick rate, 4%, Deathslinger, 3%, Spirit, 3%, Nemesis, 3%, Trickster, 3%, Clown, 3%, Oni, 3%, Xenomorph, 3%. Um, these are alphabetical? No. So I'm assuming that the extra percentages here, uh, the, the parts of a percent, show you that, like, Deathslinger is 3%. His 3% is higher than Xenomorph's 3%, if you know what I mean, for those non-whole numbers. Hillbilly at 2%, Plague 2%, Onryo 2%, Executioner 2%, Demogorgon 2%, Cannibal, that's Bubba, 2%, Cenobite, uh, Cenobite, um, Pinhead 2%, Skull Merchant 2%, Pig 2%, Dredge 2%, Artist 1%, Hag 1%, Freddy Krueger, The Nightmare, 1%, Singularity, 1%, and at the very bottom, as usual, the Twins. Twins are supposed to get a rework, though, so uh, we'll see what happens there. 
Now, moving on to the deadliest killers. Who spilled the most blood last month? Many of you wanted to know, so we've gathered the data to share with you this time around. The numbers below are the percentage of all survivors who are killed when facing that killer. For example, a 50% kill rate would mean they kill two survivors per match on average. We try to keep killers near the 60% kill rate on average to keep matches relatively even and support the horror theme of the game where the killer is a force to be reckoned with and the survival is not guaranteed. We'd like to remind you again that this data covers millions of matches across all skill levels. Some killers may be stronger when mastered, but less powerful in the hands of someone less experienced. And yes, a good nurse is much scarier. Nurse is always the one that exemplifies the, a, a low kill rate when in a group of everyone trying her, but a high kill rate when mastered. Kill rates do not include matches where a disconnect takes place. All right, top of the pops here. We have the Skull Merchant coming in at killing 7 out of every 10 survivors she faces, a 70% kill rate. Then we have Sadako at 67%. Uh, Pinhead at 63%, Freddy Krueger at 63%, The Plague at 62%, The Pig, Amanda, 61%, The Dredge, 61%, Spirit, 61%, Michael Myers, 61%, and Albert Wesker, The Mastermind, at 60%. Skull Merchant. So, uh, I saw a lot of people saying, yeah, but that's because of all the DCs, but no, no, remember... Kill rates do not include matches where a disconnect takes place, so if anyone disconnects in the match, they are not included in the statistical data. However, I will say that there are there are a faction of people who give up when they see Skull Merchant because they don't feel like playing against her, so they may be trying to jump off or not even try to stay on hook once hooked, that they will just like end the game as soon as possible. So that may have given her an artificially inflated kill rate because of that. I don't know, but she is at the top. No doubt about that. So then beyond the top 10, the standings look like this. Executioner, 60%. Hag, 60%. Artist, 60%. Xenomorph, 59%. Blight, 59%. Wraith, 59%. Nemesis, 59%. Legion, 58%. Good Guy Chucky, 58%. Twins, 58%. Oni, 58%. Bubba the Cannibal, 58%. The Clown, 58%. Deathslinger, 57%. Trapper, 57%. Trickster, 57%. Demogorgon, 57%. Singularity, 56%. Huntress, 56%. Ghostface, 56%. Nurse, 55%. Hillbilly, 54%. Be interesting to see how that kill rate has changed with the buffs to the Hillbilly in the next data set. And then at the very bottom, we have the lowly Dr. Herman Carter at 51%. Looks like he needs the most help there, wouldn't you say? Um, he's 3% like lower than anyone else. Most of these are pretty good, right? You would say... They were aiming for 50%. This is all pretty close in line to that. Oh, I should also note that the knight is noticeably absent because remember, he was kill switched for six weeks or something. So there's no data for him during that period of time because he wasn't available to play. So he's left out of all this. Survival rate in groups. Last but certainly not least, many of you were curious about a survivor's odds of escaping depending on if they were flying solo or playing with friends. In this case, a higher survival rate would mean that a survivor is escaping more. We've also included the survival rates for high MMR survivors, as well as those who are curious solo, those who, as well as solo for those who are curious. I think that's what that's supposed to say. One last time, we'd like to remind you that these numbers do not paint a full picture. For instance, a group of friends may be more coordinated but they might not be they might also be more willing to sacrifice themselves in an attempt to save their friends average survival rates by group size data taken again from December 30th to January 29th so here we have overall solo experience as a 40% survival rate and then it goes uh, actually goes down when you're in a duo which is weird but a single solo has a better average experience than a duo. 
and then three survivors is about the same, very little difference. And then four survivors, you're seeing an uptick here. We have almost a 3% better chance of surviving if you're in a four stack than if you're solo. And then at high MMR, you see it skews a bit more, especially if you're in a trio or a full four stack. Uh, at high MMR, you have about a 39% chance of survival. High MMR four stack, it's almost 10 points higher, almost nine points higher here at 48%. So there is an advantage to be had. Can, can Dead by Daylight look into other things that can be done in the HUD to help shore up these numbers between solo high MMR and high MMR here with that? Can you uh, close the gap? I don't know. I do think that some of this difference is just baked in and there's really nothing that you can do on HUD changes and things like that to change that just because of a mindset. Uh, in a solo experience, the person might not be as willing to put themselves on the line if for the benefit of the group because they don't know those people in the same way that a four stack of friends will be willing to. I'll take the, the loss. I'll take the sacrifice if it means that it helps more people get out. In solo experience, it can tend to be more of a, a viewpoint of anyone but me. As long as I'm not the one that's dying, I don't care if we get all the objective done so that multiple people can survive. But I think that's just baked into the sauce and really nothing that you can do. Now, having said that, I would not be opposed to seeing more things developed by the devs that can make the solo experience better with information. That's all for this time. We'd like to continue sharing statistics like these with you in the future. If there's something else that you're curious about, be sure to let us know. Until next time, the Dead by Daylight team. Okay, well, that's all I have for you today regarding these developer stats. What do you think of all this? Is there anything that stood out to you that you have formed some opinions on uh, as far as the perks and the killers? Any perks that you think are too strong and need nerfing? Any... Thing, any killers that you think are too strong and need nerfing, any killers that you think need buffing. I want to hear what you have to say about any and all of this. Hit me up with your opinions. I want to see what you got out of this data session here. But that's all I have for you today. As always, thank you so very much for the time that you spend here with me on my channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as it helps the channel a ton. And uh, don't forget to take care of each other in and out of the fog. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody. Bye bye. It's a Gen Rush life for us. It's a Gen Rush life for us. Set a hiding, we do gens. Set a randoms, we got friends. It's a Gen Rush life.